So here I am at beautiful Villa Marin, and I just wanted to um, take a quick video of my show before I take it down tomorrow. It's been up here for a couple months. And um, this is a painting that was done from another painting. Ooh, the dot. This is called Moraine. Tennessee willows. Not a nice surface on this one. In color. There's a funny story about that painting. So as I was painting it, a woman and her daughter came up and stand, <laughs> stood behind me. And as they walked away, they said, Why would anyone want to paint that? Part of the tough struggle that us artists have. This is up in Napa during harvest, or after harvest, because you can see it's fall color. Those are all grapes along there. I love that spot chimney. This is out at Stinson, the lollipop tree. I'm doing a big painting of this right now. This is up in Tahoe. I like this one a lot down into that water and keeping it abstract and fresh. There's an older piece, Alta, uh, what's it called? Sleeping Giant, painted this in Utah. I like this one, experimenting early on the, this is pretty old, experimenting with the, um, you know, warms and cools obviously, but, but warms and cools within white. That's challenging. This was one that just came out. I don't even remember doing it. But I love the contrast of that big horizontal, that bright color, and then a really subtle fog bank coming in. Delicate. Here's one that I'd like to make into a bigger painting. I love the abstract quality of this one. Just looking down in the water and some of those little marks that just make it money. It's called Between Two Trees. A little red in there. It's pretty much a violet green painting. Oh, another one. This one's called Popeye. Because of the muscles. I love this one. This has been around. My video of this before. But this was one of those days when I was just looked down on the ground and wow, that's cool. I think I'll paint that. One thing I love about this place, I'm actually, this show is at Villa Marin, which is a retirement community. And it's the sweetest group of people you'll ever meet. Right now they're singing in the background. <laughs> How cute is that? This was my first fascination with tarps. Maybe because I was so tired of painting green. But I like this sort of sarcophagus concept. Heavy loading at the top and then just letting it all drift down. Almost out of the picture plane at the bottom. Everybody think about that stuff? You know, I don't edit any of this because I want you to hear all my tedious little comments. This is called Buckeye Hill, and I was just in love with the Mount Diablo and this just fall color, the fall that we get, which is these textures looking deep into these shadows. I love this stuff. And then the star thistle, bright yellow, blooming up on the hill. What's this called? Oh yeah. SS Minnow. I should have gotten the uh, choir behind me to sing the song <laughs> to uh, uh, Gilligan's Island. <laughs> anyway, I just like this big happy face, this big happy boat. So I filled the whole picture plane with it. 
This is an older piece. Uh, you know, everyone falls in love with the saguaro. Love the saguaro. Anyway, foreground pretty much sucks. This is called Bear Country. This was in Wisc uh, Victor, Idaho. And um, just those rich greens. But someone told me that there are bear out there, so I went looking for evidence. And just that shot of yellow, the Cambrian layer of the tree up against there. This is an early morning painting. Like, as soon as the light hit it, I was out there. This is our beautiful California heel, hills. Heels. <laughs> it's called Warm View. And just painting those micro little bits of color and texture. Everybody like the music? <laughs> Lights out in this one. Well, over this one, but this is my beloved Bellinas. Oh! Another one. This is called Yellow Tree, and I guess I'm gonna say bye bye to it. But I love this part right, wait for it. Yellow Violet, right? There it is, right there. Last stroke I made. Oh, I paint the hose. <laughs> anyway, bye bye, Yellow Tree. This is Wisconsin, out in deep in the woods. Got bitten to shit by mosquitoes on this one. But I love the violet trees moving up, up, up. Clearly a horse, a vertical composition. So fun driving around out there. This is um, a place that I revisited the other night at uh, dusk and I'm gonna go out there again and really really start to look at those uh, those pickle weed uh, tidal marsh colors this was you know obviously a blue orange reflecting the sky I like that passage right there in the back right there mud mud reflecting sky paint that shit people I know there's boatloads of people who can do that. And we've seen this before. Hawaii, Kona. Oh, another one. This was all about that blast and then that reflection in the water of reflecting the white blast. I did this for, I think, two days, actually. I, I just wanted to come back and just kind of noodle it and see if I could get some of those skylight colors and beautiful, beautiful lava. Another one with no light on it. This was a study for a big abalone painting that I did with four by five feet. Just looking straight in called Dreamweaver. Here's another one playing with design. This is uh, another, that's that same buckeye tree but from a different, from way back. And I just love the early morning violets in there. This one is also Wisconsin, the same road two years later. And I really, I like this one. Um, I think the reason why I like it is because if you look at the brushwork, this was a, a turning point for me where I just said, fuck it and started just laying the shit down and then lifting it out. And it was a real process where I was really listening to, listening to the paint. And I think that's where I'm going. Um, less ego, less rendering, less edges, more temperature, more, more paint next to paint. Anyway, I really like this one. It's called Shooting Range because at the end of this road was a, a shooting range. I got ticks all over my belly painting that one. This is a nice simple little morning sunrise sky in Hawaii. It's not showing up well on this film. Here's another little patriotic one in Hawaii. A lot of old patriots there. 
Here's a beauty. I love this painting. This was done really quick, super limited palette. I think it was two, three colors. And if anyone's curious, just email me. And uh, no, it must have been three colors. Um, email me and I'll look in my sketchbook and I'll tell you what colors I used. But uh, nailed it. Love the shallow water. This is all like the beginnings of things for me. And this show is really pretty cool because I hung pieces that had meaning uh, in the sense that they were stepping stones to something else. Here's a little recent one. This is a uh, little teeny morning painting up in Tahoe. Here's Little Prick. I've shown this before. Little Thistle. I'm not a fan, but people like it. Dan's Path, or Path to Dan's. This is just a tree that just was on fire and then all of a sudden started blowing all the leaves just said, I'm done. So I just started painting it. Got a lot of love that day from admirer people walking by. Oh, there's another one. This, I literally, this is called Peaceful Street. This is on the, I painted this on the corner of Peaceful and Turkey Street in, in Golden, Colorado. I really like this piece. I'm sad to say goodbye. This is my beloved Bellinus Marsh, early morning, trying to capture wet sand. Did not capture it. Uh, a lot of, uh, I spent a lot of time painting lilies, but really what I was painting were the leaves overlapping. I mean, any painter who starts looking at those flowers is going to start looking at this stuff and all these little shapes. And I was just kept going back and forth trying to get them. Another buckeye, same place, painted there for a week straight. Another Kona. One of my first, here's the best part about this, painting this painting, you know, you have to conceptualize as you're painting these, these moving water pieces. Um, you can't just, I don't know. There's the little money shot, the shadow, and the white water. I'm still painting white water shadows. This one needs light, but we've seen this before. I'm surprised this isn't uh, sold. This is a beautiful painting. Uh, fog, violets. Another one of the Chimney Rock area. Pre-harvest. Napa. I'm gonna wind this down. It's a big show, so. This is called El Diablo Creeps. I love this. The star thistle was blooming and they had a fire and I just love the, the tracks of the fire vehicles going up and down that hill. This is one of my favorite paintings. I just love the simplicity of it. And uh, it's got some balls. Here's one of my favorite all-time paintings that I've done. Decided to break it out of the golden coffin. <laughs> This is a really pretty painting that's getting crappy light called Paris in Marin. I'm very fond of this. I think I'm going to give this to a friend of mine. Oh, there's another one. This is called Iceman. Right after I did this, the, um, that whole story of, this is in Alta, Utah. Right after I did this, that whole story of the Tyrolean man came up. And I was like, wow, that's like my Iceman painting. You know, the man that was, they found in, in the Tyrol Mountains? Here's a beauty. My front yard gets these incredible blooms. That's like the size of a softball. And I just paint the leaves. There's another one that's even better that I just uh, let go. 
Here's a sweetie. Did that down in Tucson, huh, Skip? I even think I saw Skip Whitcomb do a double take when he saw this one. Just for a second. I like that one a lot. And, oh, there it is. This is one of my all-time favorites. I don't think I'll ever sell this. That was a breakthrough for me. This is um, a larger painting that I did from a small painting called Ghost. And there's some successful stuff in here, especially just flirting around with fog. Instead of just laying a bunch of white on top of it, I try to paint the color. Yeah, you know, everybody knows what they're supposed to do. Nobody does it.